Today, as part of our training, we're going to take a slightly different tact and be playing in these uh, simultaneous exhibitions as people are hosting them. So that's going to be pretty great. Um, unfortunately, that means there's a bit more delay here. Uh, fortunately, what this means is that I'll be learning a bit more. So stay... Um, be patient, I suppose. I don't know. The other thing is I could, if nobody hosts a simul, I could host one. Um, what I'm hoping to practice a lot more of is queen pawn openings. Um, I had a game today, just participated in a quick 10-10 simul. Um, and it was quite a doozy of a game. Let's see, can I load that? Uh, whatever. That's yeah, Zogak was kind enough to play a game against me. I got kind of trounced there. Yeah, here's the game I was looking for. Let's look at Zug's game first. Um, so I had attempted to play in English, and Zug had said during the stream exactly what he would do against the English. And I just have, like, the memory or attention span or something of a goldfish, because I just couldn't remember that he, this is exactly what he said he was going to do in this particular position. Um, I somehow expected that he'd play like knight f6 or knight c6 or something, but no, this is perfectly fine, and I, I've never seen this before. Like, I've seen an accelerated Sicilian, but I've never seen this played against the English, so that took me a little bit by surprise, we'll say. Um, the opening book suggests playing the Marazzi bind position, which I think makes a good deal of sense. I'm just not so familiar with it. Although what I played was fine. Um, yeah, no, this actually w uh, is book. Um... So my first deviation from book was playing h4 instead of castling, because I just freaked out and had no idea how to play this kind of position. Uh, we've transposed into a benko, where I've just not taken on a6, but instead played bishop e2. Um, I don't know how to play that kind of benko. How does a benko normally go? Now this Benko is normally a queen pawn opening. Um, so I wonder, could I have done a Benko transposition right here, just taking an a6? I think so. Um, got a spam call. Let's decline that. So. Yeah, I can just take an a6 to transpose to a Benko proper. Um, although my knight is not on c3 yet, which feels incredibly weird, having my pawn on d5, but my knight not on c3. But I could transpose to a Benko, um, or I could play what I played, which is perfectly acceptable until I play h4. Um... But the moral of the story is that I ended up playing e4 anyway. So the better circumstance under which to have played it would have been right here. And then we just have this accelerated whatever this is that we're looking at. Um, so if I'm going to play e4, just play it right now. And it's totally fine to allow this pawn structure. Because again, this is the Morozzi bind. Um... So, yeah, it is unpopular. Black can take on d4. Um, well, this is interesting, though. This is like a Marozzi bind where I've not got my knight retreated off the d4 square. Um, yeah, there's no way I'm learning this, is there? So maybe uh, just sticking with my offbeat, like, Benko transposition is fine. Um, this did catch me by surprise. Like, b5 surprised me. d6 really surprised me. 
because, well, what's up with this position? I, I mean, this is a good developing move. I think I've seen this before. Maybe this is what I was prepared to see and do. But uh, d6 took me out of my expectations. Um, but I think I handled it okay, actually, to my surprise. Um, yeah, and either knight c3 or taking on a6 is fine. And both are perfectly good for white. Um, oh, a4 is the new opportunity here. Holy moly, that would have been really fun. Okay, so... Yeah, I guess that's the moral of the story, is that if my opponent tries to transpose directly into a Benko, I have a4. And now we're in something that's not a Benko. Let's see. This hasn't started yet. Okay. Um, you know, we're just waiting for the simul to start there. So, yeah, this would have been interesting. So this would have basically... Well... This is what I was. This is what I've prepared. I think even in a previous stream, I was looking at this. Knight of six, queen c two. And yeah, there are some more moves, and like this can go a whole bunch of different directions. Um, apparently, masters play castle here. Um, I can understand why Stockfish would prefer to play b four. Uh, let's highlight that this way. That prevents um, white from detouring the knight to g3 via c3. So b4 might be an improvement on master play, but masters play castle or d6 here. Um, so I guess delaying d6 until after um, white's committed queen c2 probably cuts down on white's attacking options. This seems like a useful transpositional tool. Does white still have a4? Yes. Oh my goodness, this a4 stuff is so effective. Man, if I'd pulled that out against Zug, that would have been impressive. Um, now granted, I'd have to know how to play this kind of position. But the notion of playing a Benko, where you're not stuck defending a backward pawn, is pretty nice. Um, so masters continue, knight c3, a b5. Like, yeah, this is why I expected bishop b5. Um, so white's just got a ton more space than he normally gets in a Benko. And black does eventually get the bishop onto a6, but... By the time black's done that, um, white's already evacuated the corner and is ready to push in the center or on the king side. That is really interesting. Plus, a4 isn't so weak here now, is it? Now, there's probably some opportunity for improvement somewhere in that master line. Um, Knight a6 is the main move and the highest scoring one, so we'll stick with that. Castle, knight b4. Yeah, no, this is just pleasant for white. Black lacks all the pressure that he'd normally get, so d6 is just a wasted move in this line. Um, I'm sorry, not in this line. In this line, d6 is just... Black is giving up a tempo here somewhere. I'm not sure where. Um, I guess black normally gets a tempo because white has captured all the way through a6, and in my case I just haven't done that. That's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so we're not going to see d6 there. I guess this is why he plays d6 straight away. But either way, I still have this taking on b5 and playing a4 opportunity. 
So because of all that, I don't think B5's playable here. Or playable, yes, but I don't think it's pleasant. Um, good god, what's he supposed to play? Knight f6 according to the engine, but... Knight f6 also according to the opening book. Right, so we can delete this uh, sub-variation all this d6 stuff and just focus on Stockfish's recommendation which is to take stuff out of book. Um, which seems pretty cool. I'm really surprised this has never been seen before. But I guess part of that's just that the main opening, the English, isn't as popular. Like, I'm sorry, if you were to play a symmetrical English you're probably not going to aim for this sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, when I played knight f3, he plays g6. Already we're kind of in a strange symmetrical... Well, no, this is a typical symmetrical English. Alright, here we go. Our simul game has started here. We get black. I'm going to play the King's Indian if I can. I could play a Grunfeld, but what am I going to learn from playing that? Hey, Cormac. Welcome. See so yeah, next weekend I'll be playing a tournament. Um, it's game 45 with delay. So, yeah, that's going to be an adventure. Alright, so this is, there's this F3 stuff. Um, I should be prepared for this. It's been forever since I faced it. What do I do here? I think I have to castle and then push e5? But yeah, this reminds me to brush up on both the F3 and Knight E2 stuff. I've got to look at all this again. Um, um, so I'm debating, do I play Knight C6? Knight c6 doesn't gain anything here. Let's kick the bishop. Yeah. Well, it should be interesting. So the tournament, he has an open section, an under, 16, uh, under 1600 section, and several other under sections. Um... So there's a good chance that half my games I'll be playing against like 16 and 17 and 1800 rated players. I don't expect the Open to draw many players around my rating. Um, but I don't know. Obviously I have to give the tournament the benefit of the doubt. Um, in the event that they don't manage to bring enough strong players, there's always prize money to play for instead of bragging rights, so... Um, okay, I'm very confused by this. Either way, we'll have some stories to tell after the event, so... Or at least some games to show. Can't let this atrophy too much. I feel like my opponent is trying to take me out of book. And while he succeeded at that, I'm not sure what else he's trying to do. So... I feel like I want to open the center while his king's still there. His king's going to castle queenside very quickly. But... Um... I need this space. And this f4 square could be useful. And if he pushes d5, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
Yeah, so it's very, very tempting to play knight d4. If only because there's no way he could have expected it. Unless it's actually like a thing that he's supposed to expect, but I don't think it is. Um, or I could be a coward and play knight e7. Um, which is also tempting. Decisions, decisions. Screw it, let's do it. This is going to be fun. Chess is fun. He doesn't have to take that, by the way. But I am very much assuming he will. So. Hence the pre-move. Also, the time situation kind of dictates that I... Okay, there we go. Yeah. That, in my mind, makes the most sense. That you not take on d4. Um, so... There's so many possible middle games and end games here. I don't know where to begin. Um... d6 drops if I play c5. So c5 is unfortunately out of the question, so I have to take here. Which is also very strange for this kind of opening. Um, Alright. Looks like I'll be getting an f5 after all. I don't know where he's going to castle. I don't know that I care. Also, knight g3 is possible. Um, this is one of the weirdest King's Indians I've seen. Um, we have deviated. Like, book is on one side, um, and we're on the other. We have completely forsaken the book. Um, so, now what? Bishop d7's a developing move. I do need to develop something. a6 is kind of a developing move. Actually, maybe a6 is better at developing than bishop d7. Um, f5 is what I was previously aiming for, but it seems less appetizing in this position, where there's an obvious fork afterward. Um, so I guess I'll try to open the queen side. Note that since my knight is not on f6, um, it'll be more challenging for him to orchestrate a pawn lever and a pawn break. But yeah, I don't have any targets on this king side other than the h-pawn. And the h-pawn seems amply well defended at the moment. And my bishop can't really get to h6 right now, so... i uh, got to play somewhere else. And opening the d-file doesn't really seem to be an option, so... Uh, we're going to try to open the queen side. So the idea is bishop d7, queen e8, and b5. Maybe knight g3 was worth considering. Although I don't have any way to hold the knight there. If I could somehow hold the knight on g3... That would be excellent. Um, or if I could have played knight f4 
and then we exchange on f4 and he takes the pawn and I could have gotten an h5 somehow with gain of tempo or some kind of other threat associated with it then that could have been interesting too but um, knight f4 is just it's booby trapped um, and I could play queen f6 to try to support a knight f4 advance um, but he can always play g3 to kick my knight so that's why my knight's kind of camping on h5 just waiting while I try to come up with some sort of queenside attack alright so he played g4 it's the obvious move in the position so now he's got to play rook h2 or rook h3 I don't know that it matters well I think rook h2 is better because rook h3 walks into this pin um, nah, I don't even know if I'd use that pin does not look like a very safe pin to use but um, given how slow my queenside attack is moving uh, maybe using that pin's not such a bright idea um, so now my knight's trapped so um, the impulsive thing to do would be to trade it off we're gonna resist that impulse and try to push on so my queenside attack is stalled, but I've got this nice knight on the 6th rank. We'll try to hold on to it, but he does have this bishop d3, which makes everything super awkward. Um, or he could exchange on f5 who knows how many times, and then, then play bishop d3. Um... Okay, so I want to keep files closed. Can I keep files closed? I don't think so. Oh boy. Um, I thought I had a threat here. Do I not have a threat? I could play g5 and give him a free pawn. I don't like that. Um, yeah, that h5 is really well timed. Um, So my knight on g3 is a bit of a target, and this kingside's opening up, so I need to liquidate a little bit. Um, oh, but also I'm winning a pawn. Good gravy. No, I'm sorry, no, he's threatening h6, so if I take here, I'm just getting mated. I have to play this instead. Which um, doesn't prevent pawn takes pawn. So, I better get my queenside attack moving, because I'm under fire. <laughs> oh boy. Bishop d7 seems very strong, regardless when I play it. Um, so unless somehow bishop takes g4 ends up being a winning tactic, um, we're going to focus on the queenside. Oh, really? Okay. Um. Well, that's interesting. Did not expect that. Well, this is too interesting. We have to play it. We are honor bound to play into this. Just given how interesting it looks. Um. We love a good end game, and this is about as good as they get. So if queen takes f4, my plan's queen g5, and get my king across to his side of the board. 
Um, and I think with my king on f4, things should be going my way. I've got a bishop pair. Um, he's up a pawn, apparently. But um, my position just looks amazing. If I could get the damn rook out of the corner, um, we'd be sitting on a position where we have a bishop pair in a position where there aren't very many open files. Um, so it seems like the bishop pair should be a heavy favorite in this position. Now, as soon as a file opens, everything changes, but until then, um, I like my bishop pair. I don't know if he's like focusing on a different board, or um, if my king takes g5 caught him off guard. To me, it seemed obvious that I'd want to play that. Um, or yeah, maybe this is just a difficult position to find the best move. Um, regardless, we're going to activate this rook. Either by pushing a5, or pushing something on the queen side, or maybe by bringing the rook to f8, or e8, or g8, or something. Um, Regardless, the bishop's more active on d7 than on c8, so it belongs here. Oh, he offers a draw. Oh, goodness. Um... Goodness gracious me. <sighs> I know he's playing a simul, too. Um, I really don't think I'm better here. I think it's a fun endgame, but I don't think I'm any better. Trying to find any kind of idea here. It just seems like there's a lot of loose stuff on his side of the board. Um. So I do need to exercise some caution here, that's for sure. Um, Yeah, I hate turning down the draw offer because, like, he is up material, and I don't have a clear plan, and I'm in time pressure. Um, but I think my position merits uh, some more play.
I might have bungled this. Uh, I might have bungled this. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. I still think that was an interesting position. Um. So. Okay, he's slightly better here. Or at least the engine prefers his position. Um. So king f4 would have been really good there. Interesting. And so my computer doesn't melt down, let's have the server look at this instead. Um, yeah, no, he's not going to flag me. <laughs> That's not happening. Um, on the other hand, me blundering all my material away, that's happening. That's definitely happening. Um, but no, he gives me a good idea of like how White would play this position. Uh, it is true I played well. Um, we both did. I, I played Bishop A4 because I couldn't find a move. Which is not a good reason to move. Unless you have two seconds left, which I did, so I can kind of forgive myself for that. Um, the one thing I wanted to play and then realized that the last second didn't quite work was this, because he can block. Okay, and yeah, I can get a third pawn for the bishop, but I don't like this position, and I didn't count the pawns correctly for the bishop, and I'm already down material anyway. And um, I think if he just plays king e3, he's just clearly better here. Um, or maybe king f3. Uh, his king can outbox my king. And then his rook can run rampant on the back ranks, and I'm just getting killed there, so this is just no good. Um... Yeah, that rook on h5 is very strong. Um, so, um, where was this? Somewhere I was debating king f4. Oops. Okay, rook takes f4 is considered a mistake. We could have played the same exact position but through a different move order, and it would have been better. Um, figure that one out. So, um, but that wasn't what I was looking for. Uh, King D2. Let's see. Oh yeah, maybe it was Bishop D7. Maybe I just need to go here straight away. But I don't think my king by itself is enough to break through any of this, and I didn't see a way to get my rook across. You know, this endgame is just a fortress. There's nothing either side can do to break the fortress here. Um, that's what's going on. Wow, C takes B5 is a bit optimistic. Well, no, you have to break up these pawns so they don't promote one of those. Um, but yeah, this is just a fortress. Oh, wait. C7's hard to defend. Yeah, this is the sort of thing I need practice playing. That's why I continued. Um, and obviously lost, because I lack the practice for it. Um, Alright, and then, you know, so we're going over Zug's game with me earlier today. Turns out if you play this kind of system, D5, in my opinion, D5 is very strong. Because even though Black does have ways to play against this, they're very difficult to play. And if you go for a Benko... Um, uh, this is something I've actually seen before, and black has to capture on c4 here. This is what I expected. Um, and in the master database, white still scores 60% from here. And um, if you play this as a Benko, um, white can actually play knight c3, and if black continues insisting on not... well. Taking on b5 is kind of silly, but white has a4 here. 
Um, now, I don't know if white also has a4 back here. He might. This is not in the master's database. Yeah, he does. So this is why, again, or playing a symmetrical English, um, you don't have time to play the Benko while you're doing the symmetrical English. Just it's a weird move ordering thing. Um, whereas I think a normal Benko... Um, let's see, do I get have this right? That's a Benoni. Uh, what am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? Oops, that's not it. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Knight F6. That's how you get to the Benoni. The Benko. The Blumenfeld. The, okay, all these things. Um, this is what I was searching for. Let's promote this up one. Get rid of that other line. This is what I was trying to find. Um... Yeah, and here a6, um, so white has not played e4 yet. So a4 is more than a bit silly here because uh, the pawn's pinned. Um, but in the symmetrical English line we were looking at, um, this thing where black takes time to play knight f6 and d6. I'm sorry, where black play, takes the time to play d6. Um, this d6 is too slow, and you can't transpose, because here, having played e4, um, this is no longer a pain for white, white just takes back. Um, so, that was the thing I missed. Um, Zug is right, that's not a typical English, but, um... So I think the moral of the story is, uh, if we're playing this stuff, you have to play something other than d6. So you either have to take on c4, which I've prepared in previous streams, or play knight f6, which I think I've seen once, and I'm totally fine playing this, because it looks fun. I might lose a game or two or ten, but b4 is a nice um, engine improvement over the master games. Um which just transposed back into the Benko. Well, in fact, back into the inferior Benko. Um, so there's d6, and then there's taking c4. Which takes us back to where what we were previously looking at. Um, but what were those other lines where... Oh, I'm sorry, the, there were some lines where something was recommending e5. I'm skeptical of it here, but somehow e5 ended up being a recommendation in one of these variations. But apparently it's not in the critical line of anything I'm preparing for a tournament, so we can ignore that. So before the stream, there was one other game that I played. I'm finding that playing in these simuls, I get to play against masters who actually know openings. Um, so here we played a Queen's Gambit Accepted with e4, um, which I've not played much, and I certainly didn't expect to see e5 against it. Um, and I thought this was much like a reverse... Um, I forget the name of it. But this looked like something I'd previously studied, but evidently I'm completely off base here. But also, bishop c5 is not best. Um, Oh wow, should I give away the pawn? I guess, yeah. I should give away the doubled pawn there. And allow knight takes e5, so... Um, so that's what's wrong with this. So that's why I have to take here instead. Um, or allow these exchanges or whatever, but... Um, like, if I follow the master database... E D Bishop C four Knight C six Castle. I probably don't need to know too much more about this. Um, 
So the key point is if we go into this e4 line and they play e5, this is the sort of thing I should be doing. But um, in general, I think this is I should stick with knight f3, which is what I've been playing in tournaments in the past. Um, I was just curious if I could learn something about e4 since I forgot all my knight f3 prep. Uh, I mean, this looks like a reasonable position, right? This, <laughs> I once had a... It's not 45-45. I had a leech us ladder game where I played like queen d3 and bishop c2 and just took on f6 and made it on h7. It was pretty glorious. Um, or I think they just had to give away a piece because of some sort of made threat like that. Um, but yeah, this is a typical position. Um, you and I have seen this sort of thing quite a few times before. Let's see, okay, this is my last browser tab, so let's not dismiss it. Um, let's see, is anybody hosting a simul? Great, there are two people hosting simuls, but I am higher rated than both of them. So either I could host a simul and be in this kind of hell that they're in where they're not able to find players, or I could create a tournament, or just join an existing tournament. So there's a rapid arena for what's this opening? I can't read it. Oh, I can scroll this. The Karo Khan. You know, just in case I have no soul. Um, let's see, is that all we got? E4, E5, F4 arena. Now we're talking. Please tell me that this... Oh, there's only three players. I hope that, like, this arena actually... Oh, I'm the highest rated player in this. This is not a good sign. Um... I do suppose that, um, well, this is a thematic. Well, that's cool. A C30 King's Gambit thematic. All right, black to move. I'm totally going to win this arena. Although we're going to learn some things about this opening. Um, the King's Gambit declined. Here, no, take my pawn, I insist. <laughs> okay, I have no idea what I just did there. Uh, we're having fun, though. Okay, so... Fun is the number one priority in this uh, tournament. And by that standard, I am winning. I am so winning. Alright, so... Um, okay, I got my pawn back. Somehow. Uh, everything is hanging. Here, let's attack these pieces. Okay, I just don't even know which piece I want to win anymore. Um, I am so confused. Oh wait, the queen defends f7, so I should go after this one. I could take f6, but there's no combination to win the queen there, because this queen recaptures when I sack here. Um, Alright, so we're up some material. Just a little bit. There's a check. He doesn't even block. That's actually impressive. Um, most people would block just out of impulse. Um, not our opponent. No, we've got a crafty one on our hands here. And by that I mean a clever opponent. I don't mean, like, the other thing that crafty would mean. Um, Alright, so I can pin the knight. If the king moves up, I take this bishop for free. If queen takes bishop, oh, this is a fun little shot. Um, yeah, that didn't happen, so... Let's go after the king. I think the king is still here. Yeah, we won a game! We beat a 1200! 
I'm so accomplished. Oh, I should have gone berserk. What was I thinking? I mean, this is a 2 plus 2. Going berserk is kind of suicidal, but... You know, we got a viewership to play for. Um, got to do some, like, hyperbolic time chamber levels of practice here. You can't do that if you don't go berserk. Plus, I can't win the tournament uh, if I don't get an opponent, so... Um, yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Maybe I should drop out of this one and join a different tournament or something. Here, let's let that keep going in the background. Is there anything else I'd want to join? The Horde Shield Arena. I was playing in that earlier. Um, I don't see any thematics here. That's unfortunate. I could give up my soul in the Kirokan defense rated arena. Oh, okay, well, sure, why not? Let's join it, please, pretty please. Alright, we're gonna go berserk in the Kirokan thing, because why not? That is funny that this notification for the other arena still stays active once I've joined my second arena. Here we go. Oh! I don't even get to play the fantasy variation. This sucks. <laughs> Alright. Wait. This is like playing a Queen's Gambit. This is actually going to be helpful. Who knew? Um... All uh, right, so I get to kick the queen, and I think I'm just better already. All right, well that was a nice game. Um, so yeah, I'll just drop the bishop here on. Oh, there it goes. There stands my bishop. Here's a free queen. I think I played a few good moves. Perhaps a couple unexpected moves. Um, Alright, let's just put this out there. If he checks me, we'll just move the king. Or I could play knight d2. I forgot the knight can actually interpose itself between the bishop and uh, the king. Typically I don't have a knight there. Typically I haven't developed it just yet. Alright. So, here, let's trade a few pieces, if you don't mind. I know I don't mind. All right, we'll take one of those. And I assume he takes either one of these, and then we move the other one? Probably. Currently, we're up ten points, because, you know, a queen and a bishop... Oh, I'm sorry, he's got two pawns there. I was going to say the math did not um, add up, but the math actually does check out. Uh, queen and bishop are 12, two pawns are 2, so the math definitely checks out there. Alright. I've trapped my bishop quite unwittingly. Um, so... Uh, thankfully my opponent hasn't noticed. So now if he plays e5, I can lose the bishop a different way. Or I could play queen g4 and just spice it up. Or maybe at some point I should actually play a3 and try to resolve the tension instead of just leaving it here. As fun as it is to just keep increasing the tension in the position, sometimes that's not called for. But it's certainly fun. So, uh, he could play rook c4, and I just take this with check or something. If 
If he plays rook b6, I'm tempted to castle queenside just because it looks fun. Um, and by fun, I mean just idiotic. <laughs> um, placing my king on this side of the board would be probably the worst thing I could do. I think king e2 is what I should be striving for. Alright, that's a free bishop. And if rook c5, knight b3 picks off a free rook. So, yep, he steps out of the way. I'll just castle. So the knight covers c4, the bishop defends the knight. Um, it's not looking too bright for black here. White's boasting a 10-point advantage, and maybe he's going to play g4 and then take on d4 next. Um, unless I can find places to put the rooks. Um, eh, I guess I don't need to push g4. That would have been more effective um, when my king and bishop were lined up here, and when a rook could have just dropped onto the file to shish kebab at all. Um, it's still got some degree of effectiveness here, but it's just not as effective. Let's see, so... Got a nice little attack going there. Um... Let's see, how do I continue here? Let's just develop this and then we can fork the king and the knight. Um, apparently there's not going to be a fork there. How about this fork? Hitting the king and the rook. Does that seem fine? Uh, okay. Let's see. Oh, let's just dig out the king. So I control the c7 square. Right. Um, knight d4 is not mate in one. Um, bishop f4 is pretty close to mate. I think knight e3 is forced. And then after knight e3, knight d4 mates. Um, there we go. We've beaten 1100, guys. We're going to win this thing. Somehow. We are so going to win this. check on one thing here. And that is, is there going to be a concert tonight? There might not be one. I don't know, we'll see. Because uh, there had been planned to be an outdoor concert, but there's also rain plans. Um, so this is an exchange Carocon. Probably the least interesting Carocon. Well, I don't know, this is the one that gets us the most endgames. So what am I saying? This should be fun, right? just develop, you know? If he wants to liquidate, I suppose he can. I don't know why he'd want to. Um, so... 
Let's keep some minor pieces on the board. As I orchestrate an e5 push. Let's see. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's more or less what I expected regarding the concert, so... Looks like this will be the last game for the stream. Um, so yeah, it's been fun. Um, I, obviously we still have a bit of a game to play here, but uh, I guess I'll preemptively thank people for watching and such. Um, Alright, so we're just going to shove everything on this side of the board and see what happens. And it's going to be glorious, one way or the other. I'm debating if he takes on e4, which way do I recapture? Oh, he actually did it. That's ballsy. So this is even more ballsy, I think. <laughs> Saying, uh, yeah, no, take the setter. I didn't need it. Uh, we're just gonna throw everything forward and see where things fall. It's gonna be great. Now, the more pieces get traded, the worse my attacking prospects get. Um, so I do want to try to keep at least my bishops on the board. This knight will be a valuable piece because this is a blitz. Well, in my perspective, it's a blitz game. From his, it's a rapid game. Um, yeah, I didn't get to keep that, so... Kind of bummed about that. Um, so, my plan's pretty straightforward. I just need to push on the king side and see what falls. Um... So, we're going to follow the plan to the letter. If I can open this at a good time, that would be great. Um, you know, even if I can't take the king, taking the pawn that's in front of the king will probably be good enough. Um, Alright, so f4 seems to just smash through, right? This is amply defended, uh, or is just barely well defended enough that I can push. Um, and I don't even know what to say about this anymore. It's sharp stuff. Um, Yeah, now this actually helps open the F file for my rook, so let's go with it. I don't have the E5 square. If I had that square, this would be even better. Um, yeah, let's get my other rook into the game. So try to give myself as many free tempi as I can get. Tempi. Um, oh, hang on. So if he plays knight g3 at any time, I have h4. I don't have to use my pieces to win this. Um, my pawns are very strong, too. Okay. I did not foresee that. Thankfully, I seem to win on the spot, so uh, my blind spot has not costed me here. So I've got this, and um, yeah. Well, that was fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, the plan is to hang out with some friends, um, and then there's about a 50-50 chance that the concert will happen, but either way... Um, yeah, plan is to head out now, so. Um, best of luck to whoever's going to win this thing. 
the... <laughs> I don't know, I bet there are plenty of interesting endgames in this tournament here. Um, okay. There's no... Oh, I'm sorry, he's got Queen H5 as a threat. So we got to take Queen H5 seriously. So thanks to that, we'll do this. Check. Ooh. Damn it. Too bad I've got, like, auto-promote uh, set to queen. That would have been a... Oh, wait. No, he's got, like, king there. Anyway, we won this. That counts. So, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time.